Thank you, Jonathan. Professor Reichman, it's a real honor to be here today at a university that now bears your name. Uh, it's actually my first visit here. I refused to come until they changed the name. <laughs> Mr. Savit, uh, Professor Ganor, uh, Mayor Fadlon, uh, thank you all for your kind invitation today. And allow me to start by thanking the Institute for Counterterrorism for making this memorial ceremony an annual and integral part of your international conference. Now, I am not an expert on counterterrorism, but many of you most definitely are. And the work you're doing to create a safer world does honor to all those whose lives were lost to the scourge of terrorism and to their families who are still among us. On behalf of the United States government, I want to thank you all for that work. As you gather over the next few days to discuss policies and strategies for countering terrorism, we must never lose sight of why we're here. Too many lives have already been lost, indeed continue to be lost, to despicable acts of terrorism. Now, of course, the date of this conference, as we know, is no accident. That's because on September 11th, 2001, that date remains a date seared in America's collective memory and in the global consciousness. It was a day that I remember well, a day of immense human tragedy, which we now also recognize as a turning point in the psychology of many Americans and in my own country's approach to securing our homeland. Of course, terrorism in its modern incarnation started well before September 11th, and sadly, it continues to this day. So while we remember the nearly 3,000 innocent lives taken from us in the attacks on the World Trade Center, and the Pentagon and on United Airlines Flight 93, we should also use this day to remember all victims of terrorism. And we should use this day to rededicate ourselves to ensuring that such horrific violence never befalls us again. Americans recognize that the people of Israel in particular have experienced the unspeakable horror of terrorism many times in the history of this country. The state of Israel has withstood terrorist attacks and defended its people with tremendous courage and often at great cost. The United States has profound respect for the sacrifice and remains steadfast in our support for Israel's right to defend itself against these terrorist threats. But no act of terrorism, not on September 11th, not ever, has succeeded in undermining our values or weakening our societies. Now, my intention today was not to talk about Afghanistan, but for obvious reasons, I think it's worth saying a few words. As everyone in this room knows, the United States completed its military withdrawal from Afghanistan just as the 20th anniversary of the September 11th attacks approached. Afghanistan was our longest war, and it was one born of the urgent need to stop terrorists before they reached our borders. Ultimately, the United States met the objectives of eliminating Osama bin Laden and severely degrading Al-Qaeda's capabilities. The success of the United States and its allies against Al-Qaeda and its leaders, particularly killing and capturing those who planned the attacks of September 11th, today gives us a clear-eyed view of how we deal with current threats. And that experience reinforces the need to maintain pressure on Al-Qaeda and other terrorist organizations. And that experience also shows that we can fight terrorism without a permanent military presence, that we can deal with the potential threat of terrorism from Afghanistan, just as we deal with terrorist threats elsewhere, including Yemen and Somalia and Syria and across the Maghreb. The United States has been successful in suppressing the terrorist threat to the US homeland from those countries without maintaining a permanent military presence on the ground. So it would be a gross misunderstanding to view the events in Afghanistan as a lack of US resolve or a lack of will to work hand in hand with our partners around the world. We remain committed to countering violent extremism across the region and the global coalition to defeat ISIS is a testament to what we can accomplish. That 83-member coalition has worked persistently since 2014 to reduce the threat ISIS poses to international security and to our homelands. 
The coalition's combined efforts have diminished ISIS military capability, its territorial control, leadership, financial resources, and its online influence. So even as we've withdrawn our military from Afghanistan, we continue intensive cooperation with our allies and our partners, and we remain vigilant against the potential reemergence of terrorist threats emanating from Afghanistan and elsewhere, including ISIS and its affiliates. Beyond the military campaign against terrorism, the real triumph of the coalition's effort has been diplomacy, organizing a worldwide network to stop ISIS illicit financing, ending the flow of foreign terrorist fighters, and discrediting ISIS's bankrupt ideology and its hateful message. Addressing our shared challenges together is most obviously in all our interests. And we confront those challenges by maintaining powerful ties with each of our Middle East partners, and I consider Israel foremost among them. These partnerships have been built over decades of collaboration, trust, shared values that bond the United States to the region and to Israel in particular. By making Israel part of CENTCOM's area of responsibility, we're placing our closest regional ally at the center of a set of vital partnerships which are increasingly aligned in their perception of regional threats. And at the center of that threat perception is obviously Iran. President Biden addressed this in the recent visit of Prime Minister Bennett to the White House and he made clear that we're committed to working with Israel to counter that threat, even as we remain committed to ensuring that Iran never obtains a nuclear weapon. Now make no mistake, we will continue to work together to advance and to strengthen regional security, including curbing Iran's destabilizing behaviors in the region and beyond, its, its threats to maritime security, its ballistic missile programs, and once again, ensuring that Iran does not obtain a nuclear weapon. Now, before I leave you, I want to thank once again Professor Gunor and the ICT for all that you are doing to advance professionalism in the field of counterterrorism and for your contributions to making our world more secure. I have to mention that for the seventh year in a row, the Institute is hosting a U.S. Army War College fellow. Let me say hello to Lieutenant Colonel McGinnis, who I think is speaking right after me. And the ICT, I was pleased to learn, regularly contributes to the professional development of American Service Academy graduates who study here for graduate degrees in security studies and in counterterrorism. We are extremely grateful for this partnership. Your work contributes in profoundly meaningful ways to our vital and our collective efforts to fight against terrorism globally. And your work also helps ensure that none of us sees another September 11th. So thank you. <laughs>